When Jane Austen wrote this beautiful novel, Pride and Prejudice, she wanted to tell that uh, pride and prejudice are the enemies of love. And also, the pride and prejudice are the enemies of equality between men and women. I will tell you how and why. Uh, but first, a little bit history. Where is this thing? Okay, let's see. Women's struggle for equal rights has been going on for more than 200 years. Uh, but we can start the history from um, 17. Hold on. <laughs> hey. Where will I put this? Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, on um, 1791, Olympe de Gauche wrote the Declaration of the Rights of the Women. Uh, she was a playwright, a playwright and a, a political activist during the French Revolution. And uh, in this declaration, she said, uh, women are born free and they have equal rights with men. And also in a public speech, she said, if a woman has a right to be executed by guillotine, then she should have the right to speak from the bench. After the revolution, because of these ideas and uh, because uh, of her attacks to the regime of the revolutionary government, they executed her by guillotine. And in the Ottoman era, women uh, demanded some rights in Turkey around 1800s. And in 1900s, in second constitutional era, women demanded some rights about marriage and education. That's why the, these posters at that time uh, involves a woman's picture. But please, um, be careful that the rulers of the time are promises fraternité at that time, brotherhood, not sisterhood. And at the end, women returned home empty-handed. And as I said, this struggle is going on for 200 years for women to claim equal rights with men. And uh, where are we now after 200 years? This is where we are. This is uh, World Economic Forum has been publishing a gender gap report since 2006. And in 2013 report, there is a comparison between 110 countries, uh, which shows women's situation on health, political participation, life longevity, and employment. As you can see, the least development has been occurred in political participation between 2006 and 2013. Let's look at EU, because you know EU has very many laws and regulations about equality, but the situation is not so bright there. Also, uh, only Four women managed to find themselves a place among the rulers of this family. There are 16 men and only four women. Let's ask ourselves, where are the women? Why we won't see them in politics? Do they want, don't they want to rule their country? Don't they want to rule their city? They don't want to be in politics. No, of course, they want to be in politics. Uh, and they are trying to be in politics also. Um, they are not, as men think, they are not uh, satisfied just being a mother and with their gender roles. They want to change the world also. You can see this reality when you look at the pictures of, uh, look at the numbers of 
women uh, working in their parties right now. But there are thousands and hundreds of women are working in various positions in their parties. But when it comes to be a candidate for a precious position, like being a member of a parliament or a mayorship, uh, in men's eyes, women uh, vanishes into thin air. Nobody wants to see them at electoral times. And the surprising part is that nobody punishes men for not putting women into electoral lists, for uh, violating women's right in this issue. Even women don't do anything about it. So my organization, Kader, has established to do something about this issue. In 1997, 20 women came together to discuss this problem. The problem is underrepresentation of women in politics. So we began to work on this issue. Uh, we made very many campaigns uh, for the public awareness. These public awareness campaigns also serves us, also serves as a political pressure uh, tools for political party leaders. Uh, because we wanted to show the public that we have a problem with this male-dominated democracy. So we wore mustaches and asked, uh, is being a man a must to be in parliament? We demanded 275 seats, uh, which is the half of the total seats in our parliament. And uh, for this upcoming local elections, uh, we said, don't forget the women candidates. Because of this, all these campaigns and many other things, of course, we have managed to raise the percentage of women in our parliament from uh, 2.4 to uh, 14.2 in, uh, in how many elections? In four elections from 1999 to 2011. Uh, it's an achievement, of course. Now we are uh, not the position is very bad right now, uh, but of course it's not enough. We want to change it. We will continue our struggle till we get uh, half of the seats. Uh, the main questions, one of the main questions we asked ourselves uh, during our work was uh, why women are silent? why they aren't raising their voices. Uh, because uh, men are, as I said, wounding their pride. They act as if women are invisible. They are not on the lists. They are not on the electoral places. And yet, they never speak uh, about this subject. I have an answer for, to this question. Some time ago, uh, I was an active member of a political party. In that party, I asked this question to uh, male and female colleagues of mine and uh, tried to uh, understand the mechanisms uh, into the political party. And during my research, I read some uh, books about it, and then I realized that a woman, Berit Oz, uh, studied on the subject. Berit Oz is a social uh, psychologist. She's a Norwegian lady, and uh, she's 90-something years old, but uh, has a very bright mind. And uh, she's also the first uh, female political party leader in Norway. She wrote a book about these mechanisms. We emailed each other, we spoke on the phone, and together we uh, developed a training material about this subject, which we are using in Kader still. Uh, and uh, with her naming, we are calling this suppression techniques. Uh, I want to tell you the mechanism about it. Um, in political parties, there are some 
prejudices against women. And these prejudices determine men's attitudes towards women. In time and with peer learning, these attitudes become a systematic technique. And this, when they all come together, they form a big wall. It's not a glass ceiling, it's a big prejudice wall in front of the women in politics. So, constantly, women bumps into that wall and they become compliant, tamed, if you wish. So, let's look at these prejudices. Women are mothers, a woman's place is at her home. Women are mothers, regardless that you have a child or not. Male politicians always believe that uh, a woman's priority is her children. And because of this, they try to double punish you. It means when a woman gives priority to her family, they blame her for not strong enough to be in politics. If she gives all the work the party gives her, then they punish her for neglecting her family. Women are emotional, they can take logical decisions. Women should not speak about matters they don't know. So, men hide information from women. And I can tell you a story about this. Um, women should not speak about matters they don't know. Uh, one of our members, she's an MP for two years now, and she's a political science teacher. In a very, she was a political science teacher, professor. Uh, after she was elected an MP, uh, at a party meeting, she tried to explain her views, uh, ideas on the agenda. Uh, but an older member of the party, which is a male, of course, told her, uh, shut up, professor. You mustn't speak about the things you don't know. And she's a science, uh, political science professor, but she hears sentence like this. So, men hides information from women in politics. They believe that women don't talk, they make gossip. If they talk, it lasts too long and uh, it's on useless matters. So, they ignore women. It is okay for them to not to make eye contact or do something more meaningful, like uh, checking their emails uh, on their phones while a woman is speaking on the bench. Uh, other prejudices. Women are clean creatures. Women are good at establishing relationships. Women are careful with money matters. So they give women womanly things in parties, like finding the new members, cleaning the place, doing the errands, doing the coffee, sandwiches, uh, finding new members, things like that, womanly business. I even saw a woman who was washing her party's uh, curtains once a month. She was picking all the curtains, uh, bringing them to home and washing the uh, curtains for her party. Politics is a man's business. Women's achievements are not real achievements. There is always a man behind it, whether it's a husband, a brother, or a father. But the women uh, can't do anything successful. They believe so. So the, it's okay for them to humiliate and making fun of women. This clip, a newspaper clip you see about is about the uh, French Parliament. In French Parliament, when a women MP is talking on the bench, a male MP uh, among the audiences began to glock. Uh, he began to make noises uh, like chicken uh, to mock with the uh, woman. You know, as you can see, it's happening all around the world. Uh, men 
politician men are act, act like this. And this one. Uh, women are always guilty. They are sentimental creatures, so they make mistakes. They don't know how to dress. Uh, a feminine female is not good for politics. And it's a very shameful act for a woman to demand a position. If she is capable enough, superiors, which is all male, of course, will consider her. They think like that, so they impose guilt and shame on women. You know, this is a very dirty trick. This society always applies this to women. Um, you know, all the rape victims, rape victims and uh, domestic violence victims always blame themselves because they say, I am at the wrong place, I wear the wrong dress, I burned the uh, dishes, I did something wrong, so the husband beat me, so the, the man raped me. So we must be aware of these techniques. I'm telling all this to you because uh, your awareness uh, is very important. So uh, I'm always telling all this to the political women, of course, because I believe that well-behaved women seldom make history. If we want to change all this, if we want to change our society, and if we want a bright future, uh, we, as women, mustn't be well behaved. We must be naughty, I can say. And uh, you can say, what can I do? Okay, these are the prejudices, these are the facts, but what can I do? You can do many things. Uh, if you are involved in politics, don't try to use these techniques to women. If you are only a voter, in electoral times, Ask your party, where is the woman? Why they aren't on the electoral lists? Demand equal rights for men and women always. Uh, don't let women alone. Don't leave women alone in front of the united male forces. It's the only way to transform male democracy to real democracy. So in the future, if we want real democracy, we must all believe in equality. Thank you.